2012 and 13. Yeah, I'll just turn it over to you, whoever. Good morning, I'm Connor O'Donoghue. This is Adam Allen. Adam was the senior manager on the engagement. <clears throat> we're here today because we're required under auditing standards to review or go over certain communications <clears throat> with you all, with the board, which is charged with governance of the audit. So with that, uh, we have an outline that uh, Adam will go over with you, and it's fairly consistent with what we've done in the prior years. Okay. Hopefully everybody's got a copy of it. Let's kind of go down the list and uh, order one of them. First, let's describe the responsibilities of management, the responsibilities of the auditors, and the responsibility of those charged with governance, which is the board. Uh, the audit, uh, basically we're responsible for coming in and making sure that the financial statement is prepared by management, is materially accurate in accordance with GAAP. <coughs> and uh, we'll flip through the cap here in a little bit. You'll see that we issued an unqualified opinion, so everything was materially accurate in accordance with GAAP, which is, uh, which is the best thing you can have. And then those charged with governance, the responsibility is just basically monitoring the process, monitoring management, monitoring us, and making sure that the process goes smoothly. And so our responsibility is to communicate any issues that come up, and that's what we're here to discuss today. Uh, plan, scope, and timing of the audit, that was addressed in our engagement letter back in uh, December. And we had the audit uh, as, as scheduled in August and September with an issuance uh, in, in November after approval by the board. Significant findings from the audit, uh, we'll just kind of go down this list, qualitative aspects of accounting practices. Significant accounting policies are described in note one in the CAFR. There are no changes to the accounting policies with the exception of implementation, required implementation of GASB 65 during the current year. And we'll go over that again when we go through the CAFR, but um, that's really the only change in the accounting policy during the year. Significant estimates that are out there. Uh, have to estimate the network usage between the systems, estimate the allowance for doubtful accounts, estimate the depreciation, and estimate the OPEB liability. And those are really the kind of significant estimates that are out there and, and uh, included in the CAFR. Significant difficulties encountered in performing the audit. We didn't have any difficulties in coming, encountered during the audit as consistent with prior years. Clark and Jenny were great to work with and uh, were able to complete the audit in a timely manner. We didn't have any disagreements with management, and we didn't have any other audit findings or issues to discuss. As far as material corrected or uncorrected misstatements, just a couple of items to note, uh, not necessarily a misstatement, more of a reclassification, but there were a couple of reclassifications between CIP to, to plan assets as a result of assets becoming in service, but not the work order not being 100% complete, so just uh, a gap versus a practice going on right there. And then we just had some uh, modifications to the estimates of the network usage between the different funds. Nothing, nothing unusual. In addition, we required management representations, again, consistent with prior years. Just we required management representation letter from Clark and Jenny. And uh, to our knowledge, there were no other consultations with other accountants during the audit. And that's our required communications. I'm just going to go over it. A few highlights in the CAFR, for the most part, things were very consistent with prior year, and um, again, it's a clean opinion. So if you'll flip in your draft CAFR to page one, this is our report on the financial statements. <coughs> and if you'll note in paragraph four there, we describe how, in our opinion, the financial statements are in accordance with uh, generally accepted accounting principles. And it's a clean opinion, which is, like I said, the best opinion you can get. And then if you'll flip over to page nine, uh, this is going to be your basically P&L or income statement. Uh, the government calls it changes in that position. And this kind of goes through what the income statement was for each of the three systems or each of the three enterprise funds. And the good news is all three funds uh, had an increase in change in that position, which is what the state likes to see, what the management likes to see, and of course what you guys like to see. You'll see there at the bottom there's a restatement, C note 13, and that's as a result of the implementation of GASB 65, which requires you to go back and uh, restate your prior, your prior net position balance as a result of uh, GASB no longer allowing you to capitalize and amortize the debt issue costs for any debt issuances that you had out there. So <clears throat> all of those assets that were recorded and being amortized over the life of the notes are now being uh, 
collapsed into the equity position since they were previously issued. Um, let's see, and I guess the, like I said, note one, uh, which begins on page, page 12. Begins on page 12. And it just kind of describes the policies. There are no new accounting policies that were implemented other than the um, GASB 65 implementation. The notes from note 1 up to note 13 haven't changed other than the amounts representing the uh, activity and balances in the current year. So if you'll flip to note 13, which is on page... Page 30. There we go. It basically describes the implementation of GASB mm -hmm. 65 and the effects on net assets and the effects on income. So, again, that, that, that'll describe why you saw that restatement in the income statement. It's not anything that we did incorrectly. It's that GASB's changed the rules now and as a result has required you to go back and restate prior uh, net position. And that's basically... If you guys have any questions on the CAFR, I'll be happy to answer them, but for the most part, it's very consistent with prior year, and uh, the only real change has been that implementation of GASB 65. Okay. That's, that's the cost of the bond issues, is that yeah. That's correct. basically all that is? That's correct. You used to be able to capitalize them, and uh, the GASB decided that now you have to expense those costs in the period in which uh, the bond's issued. Much rather better for us. Sure. So you'll no longer have those expenses going out. In future periods from that amortization. Whatever month and year we issue, it's kind of a damn thing. Yeah, it's going to carry the truck, yeah. I've done something right. <laughs> <laughs> There's no new Gatsby's out there that's going to be affected for you guys. Um, all the new Gatsby's that have been implemented so far uh, this year uh, either don't affect your because you're an enterprise fund, it doesn't affect you because you don't have that kind of transactions occurring. 